So if you already own a microphone like a mobile shotgun microphone or Rode one, or even if you have a wireless connection like the Rode Wireless Go, I'm gonna be going through a couple different audio connections that you can use for your video and live streaming setup so you don't have to buy any more extra gear. Let's get into it. Hey, what's up entrepreneurs and welcome back to the channel here on Entree Woman TV. I help you simplify the video creation process, whether that's going through a video tech tip like we'll be diving into today or a video marketing tip. Both are here on the channel. So if that's something that you're into, definitely consider subscribing, but let's get into the multiple ways you can hook up all these audio devices. So if you're like me, you own a couple variations of a microphone, like a shotgun microphone, wireless setup, even this kind of podcasting style microphone. All of these are very easy to connect to your camera or to your computer, I'm actually pumping the audio that you're listening to right now from this podcasting microphone directly into my camera. I'm not using Ecamm Live. And so I'm gonna show you how to do this as well. But quick rule of thumb as I'm going through some of these um, different ways that you can connect, it's not the end all be all list, but just some helpful ways with some that most of you guys would probably own. If I'm saying TRS, that's the one that has two bands, two black bands at the end of the microphone connection. Or if I'm saying TRRS, that's the one that has three black bands at the end. And the difference is TRS connections typically will go into your microphone or typically will go into your camera directly. The ones that have the three black bands, the TRRS are the ones that are gonna connect into your smartphone or maybe into your laptop. Now, depending on if you have a PC or if you're using like a Mac system for you for Mac users, we're typically going to be putting the TRRS, the three black bands part into our computers when I'm saying connected to the computers. But I'll try to put some timestamps down below if you want to jump to any specific microphone type setup. Uh, but if not, you just want to know through all of them. Let's get to it. So the first connection I'm going to be showing you is how to take your shotgun microphone and plug this and get audio from this in your computer. Now, if you have a camera that has clean HDMI out, like I have my Sony a6400, I don't need to do anything different. I literally could put this on top of the camera like I usually would and both audio and video can be sent via the cam link and go straight into the computer. If you have a Canon camera, one that doesn't have clean HDMI out, it's not a possibility. It's just a fault of the manufacturer, not of the cam link or the software that you're using or nothing like that. So what you wanna do is connect the TRS port straight into the microphone, and then you're going to want a TRRS connection going into your computer. If you got something like this Movo, VXR10 shotgun microphone that I love using. They give you all the cables and stuff that you would need for this setup. One has two black bands, another has three on it. So both will work for you. And you plug this in and you're able to get audio straight from your microphone into the headphone jack into your computer. Now you're not getting that audio coming in through your camera, but you can get it straight into your computer. If you want to be able to listen to the audio like I'm doing right now and just monitoring that, since you are using up the headphone jack, you wanna use a Y splitter. These are super cheap. They don't usually run, run a couple bucks on Amazon. You can even find them in your local store. So it should not be hard to get. And basically all it's doing is letting you hear with one, one side and then be able to pump the audio through the other one. So that'll work for you just like it's working now. But that's the first one if you're trying to use your shotgun microphone. So the second way that you can connect an audio device you probably already have is your USB microphone. Now, most people know to just connect the USB port to the camera, to the computer, and then you're good to go. But you can run this audio straight into your camera if you want to. Now, uh, as far as, again, doing this for uh, a live streaming setup, it's not really recommended. It's more or less if you wanna do it like this, separate and apart from software you're just trying to get it straight into the camera because otherwise you can just connect it via usb now when it comes to powering the microphone uh these don't require phantom power which you know requires this 48 volts and some other stuff i'm not getting into but you still do need to power the microphone so i have mine still running into the laptop because i'm close enough to it but the most portable style of doing it is not even with the battery bank or a wall outlet. It won't work for whatever reason, but you can if your phone has or your microphone has uh, iOS connectivity, you can just plug it into your phone with a little adapter and that'll work. 
So that same USB cable now, instead of plugging it into the laptop for power, you can plug it into your phone for power. And then you can kind of use that a little bit like a wireless setup. Now that's the part one for the power side of things. The other half of that is going to be running the audio. Still take that Y splitter that I talked about before and you run that out of the headphone jack because mine has one. And that's the way that this works is so you're going to run that Y splitter so you can listen with one in and then you plug the other into your camera. So you want to use the TRS, the two black band one going into the camera and the TRRS, the three black band one going into your microphone or that Y splitter. And the only other thing you want to take into account is the distance. So you can buy a longer cable. Again, these aren't shouldn't be sold out online and they shouldn't be hard to find even locally. So this is an easy connection if this is one that you wanna take into using your microphone with your camera and be apart from software. So this third option gets a little bit tricky and there's two methods. The easiest one is if your camera has clean HDMI out, you have a capture card, you don't need to do anything special to run the Rode Wireless Goes. Uh, you just plug it into your camera like normal and then you send both the audio and video uh, through the cam link, for example, and then you can see the cam link as a selectable audio option and it's going to be pulling the audio from the Rode Wireless Go. Now, if you don't have it, but you do have by chance an audio interface, you may only need one other piece you probably don't have to get this to work. This is going to be using uh, my Behringer 404 HD, which is an audio interface. I can power it via USB. Doing that, it will send the audio information and all of that into the computer. Not gonna jump deep into that, but that's what that connection would be. Now, to get the Rode Wireless Goes to be the audio source that I'm using on, let's say a live stream, I need this piece called a VXLR Plus by Rode. Now, this is gonna take this 3.5 connection and turn it into an XLR connection that you'll typically see with most audio devices and even, like I said, a mixing board or something and we're gonna plug that in. Are there cheaper ones out there? Sure. Are there you know, other variations of this? Sure, but I went with the one by Rode because of the audio quality. And when it comes to audio, the last thing you want is to have something that, yeah, it plugs in, but it picks up interference like crazy. Uh, so I went, did research ahead of time when I was using this last year and the Rode VXLR Plus was by far the best one and it was worth the money. So once you have this connected into your audio interface, you now want to be able to go ahead and select the audio option being for me, it's the, it'll say UMC 404 HD or something like that. That now becomes a selectable audio option. And now it's pulling in all of the audio coming from the audio interface, not from the camera or anything. And so I can now have a wireless setup. Yeah, the camera is connected to the computer and now this audio interface is connected to the computer, but I can take my side of things. I can take my audio and walk around the room if I want to. So I'm gonna be testing other options. I just don't know if this is a road kind of a thing because this can hook up to your camera and your phone just fine uh, with the various connections or respective connections. But when it comes to plugging it into your computer, I've not been able to pull that off uh, with the Mac. So I'm just not sure if it's a road thing or not. I have two other, uh, options that I can test that I want to get my hands on. Um, and I'll do a follow-up video at some point when I have access to those. But, uh, as far as the road wireless goes, you can try other connections if you want. I've done several of them and nothing seems to work other than using an audio interface in the way that I have to convert that 3.5 into the XLR port is with that VXLR plus. And I did try uh, a bigger adapter that you can use that doesn't work. It doesn't transfer the audio. Again, I don't know all of the ins and the outs and the whys. I just know what did work and what didn't work over all of the combinations and cords and connections that I have that I used that did and did not work. And these were the only two that I found that you can use to get this road wireless go specifically to work. So once I get access to some other units, can test those out then I'll add those to, you know, like a live streaming playlist for audio or something like that. But these are the three probably most common ways that you can take a podcasting microphone, a shotgun microphone, or a wireless microphone setup that you already own, you're already using for your regular videos and incorporate that into your live streaming setups. And audio is pretty easy. 
to get a multiple variations of ways that you can do it. But again, it's hard to get equipment right now in the midst of this, you know, coronavirus stuff. And until things get back to normal, uh, it's looking like 30 days to get some of anything audio and video related. But if you need any of these adapters or cables, I'll link them down in the description down below. But let me know what are you using for your audio, for your wireless setups, or even for your live streaming setups. I'm really curious to see what equipment you guys are using. So let me know down below. Don't drop any links because those automatically get blocked, but you can name them. So with that, guys, live with passion. I'll see you in the next video.